On this channel, we have reviewed some pretty affordable football boots, with some going as low as $50. But I figured we could get something cheaper. So I decided to do something I'd never done before and search Amazon for a new pair of football boots. And just two seconds later, I found the exact men's soccer cleats, women's football shoes, unisex outdoor rugby boots that I was looking for. I figured with around 179 reviews and 4.8 stars, what could go wrong? Not to mention they were $29, which meant I could buy nine pairs of these for the cost of one top-end Nike or Adidas model. To be honest, I don't know what to expect out of these boots, but thankfully I don't have to wait long. Because thanks to 21st Century Logistics, we got two day shipping. Here they are, our $20 pair of football boots. I literally just got these from the mail, so let's take them out of the box and see what we're working with. I also still don't know how to pronounce the name of this brand. I think it's Liochi, but either way, here they are, fresh out of the box. Honestly, that's a pretty sick colorway. I think that gold came out pretty nice. It's always hard to know when you order something online exactly what it's gonna look like when you get it in person, but that's not too bad at all. I think they had a few different colors on their website, but the gold was definitely the one I thought that looked the best. It's like got this black and gold checkered pattern that's gonna run all throughout the upper. So you do have a nice amount of texture all throughout both sides of the football boot. In terms of how the upper feels, I mean, it's a little bit rigid, but not much more rigid than I've seen from like 60, 70, $80 boots. So it doesn't feel that bad. Let's see, it's a traditional lacing system. You can see that it's tongue right in the center of the boot there, nothing too crazy there. And then when you look at the outsole, this is literally a mirror image of an existing Nike outsole. So I'm not sure if they could possibly get into any trouble from that. It looks like uh, the AG variation of Nike's current outsole, which is actually a good thing because it's pretty much just conical studs, which is what I would use anyway, since I mostly play on artificial grass. So the sole plate doesn't look bad. It's got a decent amount of flex near the toe box and then a little bit more rigid towards the midfoot. I don't wanna to make too many comments about these boots yet since I just got them out of the box. So let's take them to the field and see how they actually perform. All right, I'm at the field and I got our $20 cleats, so let's try them on and see how they feel. All right, I might be speaking too soon, but these are surprisingly comfortable. I mean, I definitely skied a few shots, but it's not the boot's fault. It's mostly my fault. And I'm gonna give a little bit of fault to the small goals as well, because they're really short. But honestly, these were surprisingly pretty impressive, especially considering the fact I had Chipotle a couple days ago and it was about the same price as these boots. And I guess it's also good to know that after 40 minutes, they didn't fall apart completely. All right, so now that I'm back from the field, I just wanted to give a quick recap on the overall design of these boots. So the upper, while it is a little bit rigid, it actually strikes a decent balance by not being too thick or too thin. So it's not gonna offer you a barefoot touch on the ball, but it's just thick enough to give you a little bit of protection without being too bulky. And in the centralized lacing system I talked about before, it actually is pretty well executed and it's gonna offer you a lot of lockdown throughout the boots. Now, one thing I noticed when I took these boots out on the field is that the inner heel liner of these boots is actually pretty nice. It's almost like this soft, 
faux leather material, but it's thin, soft, and it definitely feels like something you would get on a more premium model. Now the checkered pattern that you get throughout the upper really isn't that exciting, but in my opinion, it's still better than nothing and it gives the boots a slight added dimension of detail. Now the sole plate that I mentioned earlier being pretty much identical to Nike's artificial grass sole plate, there are a couple things that you'll want to take note. And first being, this is not the exact same sole plate that Nike uses, and you can tell that because of how much it bends here. So it's gonna be a lot more flexible, AKA a lot less rigid than the sole plate you would get on an artificial grass Nike boot. Now I've heard some people say that sole plates like this that have a lot of bend in them are gonna be unsafe when you're on the field. I personally don't agree with that and I don't have that experience when wearing them. I just think it's important to know that although this does look like a Nike sole plate, it's not gonna be the same. It's just gonna be a lot more flexible. And as I mentioned, that's not necessarily a bad thing because some players might actually appreciate having a little bit Bit more bend, especially around that midfoot area. Another small point is that the laces are probably a little bit longer than they need to be, but honestly, it's not that big a deal. So overall, while I'm not necessarily blown away by these football boots, I'd say I definitely expected a lot worse for a $30 pair. So we know the design is decent, but how do these boots actually feel on feet? Well, the first major thing that I wanna point out is that these Amazon boots here run pretty big. So I saw one person in the reviews saying to size down and I took their advice because I typically wear a size 10 and a half US and they only offered whole sizes. So I decided to opt for the size 10. And for me, that size 10 worked pretty well and I actually had more space than I expected in the front of the toe box. But just to make sure that I didn't have any extra room throughout the midfoot or slipping around the heel area, I did have to tie the lacing system as tight as possible. So I would definitely recommend if you are potentially considering these boots to go at least a half size down to a full size down. So if you do happen to be between two sizes like me, definitely go with the smaller one. And then regarding the fit, there are some shortcomings that I often expect when I'm trying on a cheaper pair of football boots. And surprisingly, this didn't have a lot of them because in a lot of cheaper boots, sometimes they have a pretty bad heel area. So they're not deep enough around the ankle. So you don't get enough lockdown and sometimes your heel can be slipping from the back of the boot. But the heel on these actually felt pretty premium as I mentioned and after about an hour of playing I didn't get any blisters or pressure points whatsoever. And the lacing system is well positioned so you do get a nice amount of lockdown at the top of the ankle here. And now I should also point out about these boots that the upper is not very flexible and it's also not very breathable. Now being that these are $29 boots neither of those things are that surprising. But since the shape of these boots is pretty accommodating for most foot types, I honestly didn't find the upper to be that much of a problem because they gave me a pretty decent fit right out of the box. They are gonna bunch up a little bit towards the toe box when you're walking and running, but it's not enough to the point where it's uncomfortable. So once I got these boots on feet, what were they actually like to play in? I'm gonna be real with you guys, these boots put in a surprisingly solid shift. When I was juggling, dribbling, or shooting, at no point did I look down at my feet and think, damn, these boots feel cheap. The striking surface is pretty clean, so you're gonna get a decent connection with the ball. And while the upper isn't thin enough on these to give you a barefoot feel, you're still gonna get a moderate amount of sensitivity. Now I will say, I think the sizing of these boots did affect how I played in them a little bit. And I really do wish that half sizes were offered because I think in my situation, a nine and a half probably would have fit me a little bit more secure. But honestly, as long as you size down appropriately and then get the laces as tight as you can, it shouldn't be much of an issue. I was playing on firm ground, natural grass, and honestly, the traction felt great. I felt really comfortable with no slipping whatsoever. And because the sole plate features all of these conical studs, I would definitely still feel comfortable using these on an artificial grass pitch. Now, are these boots as comfortable as the Mizunos or the Adlers that I would normally play in? Obviously not. But for me, the important thing to note about these boots is that they're not uncomfortable. Because believe me, I've tried on boots that cost a lot more than this that were a lot less fun to play in. But at the end of the day, I guess the real question is, who are these boots actually for? Now, depending on where you live and your budget, it might be hard to get certain football boots. Now, while I don't love everything about Amazon, they do operate across five different continents in over a hundred countries. And that makes it an accessible marketplace for billions of people. So if you live in a place where it's harder to get boots from the bigger brands, or if you just happen to be on a really tight budget, I actually think these could be a decent option. Because at the very least, they'll allow you to play the game effectively and comfortably. Now, would I personally recommend getting these boots? Well, if you could stretch your budget up to say $75 US, I do think there's some better options. For example, the Tiempo Legend 10 Academy from Nike, I think is gonna be a better football boot than this. It's gonna have a softer upper and just better overall lockdown. But nevertheless,
nonetheless, at $29, I enjoyed these boots so much more than I thought I would. So if your budget does happen to be strictly $50 or less, I don't think I would say no to these. And that is gonna do it for this video. I actually have a lot of fun getting the chance to review some of these more affordable models. So if any of you have suggestions for some cheaper boots to review, just leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more football content, and I will see you in the next video.